people get on the stand. I'm like, I like him, but I don't like everybody. I'm really a lot of fun of those people. He can play every instrument under the sun. He can sing, but he can't preach. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Brother Ivan. Woo! I brought back some memories, brother. Yeah. He used to play that baby grand in the church, and that thing would be just shaking when we were going. Woo! Amen. I didn't know there was that many notes on the piano. That was awesome, brother. That was awesome. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Um, I may something say something then when he gets back to so here. But uh, I am glad for the house of God. Yes. Thank you. Let me tell you what church did for me. It gave me a family. That's what church has done for me. Um, my life growing up was not all that. Uh, it was good. It was just confused, and I've given my testimony before. Um, my parents got a job, and a uh, uh, couple of foster homes and some things like that. So, But when I got in church, I gained a family that I had for years. And I have had the privilege to have some of them come out in the last couple of months, and we've met some of those people. And I promise you, if you stay in God's house, not only do you get the blessings of the Lord, but it comes with benefits. You get a family. You get a place where you belong. It doesn't matter where I go. I go to any church in the world. And when they raise their hands and begin to pray, I'm, I'm amongst my family. I feel right at home. I've gone to churches in the, uh, you know, all over the state and, and all over the country, really, and, and, and Hawaii, and I've gone and... and uh, Alaska, and as soon as you walk in the door and they start to worship, I'm at home. I'm with my family. Amen. There's something about having family. Praise God. Yeah. I know you stepped out there. I want to honor you today on Father's Day. I love you. Appreciate you. One thing about my dad, he beat the car out of me. Now, you ain't been spanked until you've been spanked by my dad. That belt came down from the ceiling. It was breaking the sound barrier and the flames were coming off. The one in contact with my butt. Now, he, he had this policy. He only hit you twice. But boy, he made me stop. And uh, I'd start crying when he pulled the belt off. So I had a good, you know, good cry. Well, maybe I only get one. But he was, he was faithful just two times. Uh, but uh, my dad always did one thing. He would sit down after he beat the car out of me, put his arm around me, and say, I love you, son. Now he would punish me without telling me he loved me. And now I know I'm, I have the relationship with God I do. But when he has to correct me, I know this I love the same thing. Amen. So thank you, Dad. Thank you. Amen. I'm not going to be long. <laughs> I'm really not going to be long. You're going to have to preach with me real quick. I do have a word I want to encourage somebody today. Um, the title of my message is In My Father's House. In my Father's house. John 14 and 1. Jesus speaking. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house. Everybody say Father's house. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus, I pray, God, for an anointing on my voice today, and I pray for every hearer of your precious word. God, let the word get into their heart, speak to their heart and their mind. I pray, erase the pain of the past, O oh God, and let today be a brand new start, Jesus. I, let today be the first day of their life, O oh God. Let the, today be the first day they feel peace and the comfort of your spirit, I pray in Jesus' beautiful name. Smile real big at somebody, and you may be seated. I won't know who's not smiling because you're still standing. <laughs> Amen. How many know that God always gives promises? Yeah. Amen. Now, 
it's hard sometimes to relate to a God that you cannot see, you cannot touch, you cannot uh, audibly hear all the time. There's just not a presence where I can turn around and put my arm around Jesus and say he's right here with me, although he is never far from me. But it's hard to relate to a God that you cannot see when in your life you have not had a father figure to show you or represent to you what a father should be. If you have had a good father and you have good memories, and, and fathers don't have to be perfect, they just have to be there. The older I get, the more I appreciate my dad. Why? He's just there. I'm glad he's there. Uh, some of us have, have lost their fathers. Brother Chris Monroe was talking earlier, and his father had passed on, and, and, and his grandfather was in that place, and his grandfather passed on, but not before passing on to him a heritage from his father. Some have grown through life that they, they, they did not have a father, and, and it, I've read some things on Facebook of, of somebody had posted about uh, never really having a father, and and find, finding it hard to understand that relationship. Friend, I can relate to that. I understand that. You can't understand something you've never had. You know why poor people are out with poor children or even poor people can be happy? Because if they've never had riches, they've never experienced it, they've lost nothing. So somebody that's never had a father, when we're all having a great time and talking about our father, they, they, they're, not, they're not against the, what we're doing. They just don't understand it because they've never had that relationship. So sometimes it's hard when we have fathers that some people come in and, and they're broken, not because they want to be, but because they decide or they see something that somebody else has, but they don't understand it because they never had it. It's hard sometimes for a pastor to tell how loving God is when you read the Bible and there's some judgment, and there's some penalties, and, and there's some things in there that we don't understand. But if you had a father that you would know, he'd beat the tar out of you, but a loving was coming. So maybe an ice cream or a trip to the store or, or, or a fishing trip or something outside. My dad always, always, I can never remember being spanked. And let me tell you, spanked good. That's where I learned it. Uh, that he did not come and tell me. And I remember him saying, the son, this hurts me more than it hurts you. And in my mind, I was thinking, how can that be? How can that be? One time I was in the room and me and my brother had done something. And he just came in with a belt and spanked us. And that first stroke that he hit me, I jumped over that bed and I was screaming. And I had forgot, I had put a whole pack of caps in my back pocket. My dad was good at spanking, so it set off most of them. <laughs> so we checked pockets before we got spanked up. I remember sitting in the tub with Burns bottom, but my dad said, we're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know why I remember firing his pants. But there was never a time that there was not some consolation. But somebody that's never had a father... When, when they read the Bible, they can't get the full concept of the Bible because they can't really relate to what it is to have a father correct and love. You may have had a father that, that all he did was correct. You never heard the words, I love you. You never, I kissed my dad on the lips till I was 14 years old. One day he says, son, your whiskers are bothering me. How about you just plant it right here? I was heartbroken. I was my dad. Y'all think that's gross. That was my dad. He had a set of boys when they were growing up that, boy, we all ganged up on you. You were in trouble. When the run row boys started coming, you were in trouble. We was all his size at an early age. I was never ashamed of my dad. But some of you, when you read the Bible because you can't understand it, you can't understand correction. You can't understand how God deals with man. You really can't get the full concept of who God is because you've never had a relationship with a man in your life to explain how it works. My daughter's first love was me. I taught her everything there was to know about a husband. I never touched her in an inappropriate way. I was her father. And so when she looked for a husband, that's how she got happy. 
we actually pick him. <laughs> a, a young person, especially young women, need their father because in the in the way they relate, the way they understand love, physical touch, acceptance, all the traits that a woman needs to, to feel her, her void in her life that God put there so that she would marry a man and complete her. They're, they were given to her by her father, and when we mess that up, it causes conflict in that young person. Children need fathers. The reason we have an epidemic of violence in our country is not because of guns. I've never seen a gun come out of my gun safe and shoot anybody. But there are, there are young people that are angry, especially a young man. You know what puts a young man in check? You know why I never got in trouble? I never talked back to my teachers? Because there's a fear of God. All my principal had to do was pick the phone up and act like he was going to call my dad. And you know what I did? Yes, sir. I'll do it right now. Sir. I didn't argue with the policeman because I knew he'd take it to my dad. That the, the anger and the violence is in a young man. You women don't understand this. Us, us boys, we love violence. When I was 18, I just wanted to box. I just wanted to hit people. It's in us. It's in our nature. That's why we need a father to check that and put it in its place. Don't you touch your sister like that again. I'm not going to keep that. <laughs> I've never hit my wife. I wouldn't even think of hitting my wife. My dad told us, growing up, you hit a girl. Don't do that. I just don't do that. The father plays a critical role in the mental development of a young woman, a young man. Now, it's hard preaching in these days. I'll be honest with you, it's hard. Because there's so many families that have had problems. And, and I can't avoid telling the truth and 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 Try to avoid stepping on people's feelings. And I'm sorry. Look, I come from a blended family. I know. I know. But it's difficult. Right. But nonetheless, the next generation's got to know it. So when we stand in the pulpit, you got to tell the truth. You need to get married one time. You need to work it out. You need to raise your children to take responsibility. Amen. 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 It makes us all uncomfortable. But truth will do that. I will tell you this. My dad told me this, and I, I, I preach this. You can do everything for a child. Everything for a child. I mean everything. You can, you can be the best parent you've ever been. But the day they turn 18, we'll find out what they're going to do. It doesn't mean you made a mistake in raising them. It doesn't mean you were a bad mom and dad. I've seen the worst kids come from the best parents. And the best kids come from the worst of parents. We're individuals. We're going to stand before God and we're going to make an account to Him about the decisions we make. I say it all the time. Your life is a culmination of all the decisions you've ever made. So today is the day you start making good decisions. Oh, but my daddy, well, friend, look. That was yesterday. Today is the day you start. Jesus can be a father to the fatherless. Yes, Let me tell you something about God. And you, and you may have a hard time understanding this. You, you might not get the concept, especially if, if you've been in a, an abusive relationship or, or didn't have a dad or, or had a violent dad or, or uh, you, God forbid you were sexually assaulted by your father. Things happen and, and, and you can't control every circumstance. But you can respond and control how you respond to the circumstance. The Bible is such a, a clear device that we can look at and we can see what life should be. What it should be. Do we always measure up? No. But it gives us clear direction on what we should do. The thing you need to understand about God is he is not slack concerning his promises. If he promised to you he would be there, he's going to be there. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. For you. I'm going to build a house for you. That where I am, you will be also. You know what kind of comfort you can take in that? You may have had a dead being dead. You may not have had a dad. You may have had a good dad like me. But let me tell you something. He's the father of us all. And when he says something, he's good to his word. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Jesus came to this world to reveal, to reveal 
was. The God of heaven that he could not see that was only holy. That Moses went up on the mountain and, and, and had interaction with him. When he came down, his face shone like the sun. And, and they were afraid of him. They were afraid of God. There was a terror of God because they did not know God. But when Jesus Christ was born and he walked among us, it was the creator walking among his creation, showing man who he really was. Trouble not the little ones to come unto me and forbid them not. For such is the kingdom of heaven. He loved children. Well, he could not walk by a situation where somebody called out like, like a blind by our midst, calling out his name. God, he revealed himself. Jesus revealed himself. Who his true nature was when he, when he let man nail him on a cross for sin that you committed. He revealed how much he loved you. He revealed how much he cared for you. He revealed the power of his name. He revealed what a father will do for his children. Jesus loved us so much that he would go all the way, all the way to a cross and die because of you. I had a bunch of scripture in here. There's no way I'm going to get through them all. There's something we need to understand about God's nature. He loved you when you were unlovable. The Bible says, for, I can't quote it, I didn't put it in there. Let me see if I can come up right. Nope. You were unlovable. You were separated from God. But God came to you. You know why? Because that's what fathers do. That's what fathers do. I, I was going to read it. I don't have time. But the prodigal, the prodigal son is a story that Jesus told his disciples and those that were listening about a relationship that he would be the father of when he gave that, that parable of the prodigal son, he did not gloss over what the son had done. He went out and wasted his substance in riotous living and with harlots. He was in the world. He was living like the world. He was doing everything he wanted to do. But the Bible says I, he came to himself and he remembered his father's house. God doesn't want you to forget his love when you have failed. You know why you come to church? It's because the pastor comes in and reminds you of the love of your father. That when you were out of the world doing things you knew you should have been doing, God was still there in his house waiting for you, thinking about you, caring about you. Most of you know the story when the young man ran out of money and he was eating husks that the pigs were eating. He said, I'll go to my father's house where they have plenty. He gets up and he goes back to his father's house. And on the way, his dad, who was at the fence or at the gate somewhere at the edge of the property, standing the horizon, noticed his son was coming. And when he did, he ran to his son. He embraced him and kissed him. That's how a father does. That's how Jesus does. Amen. The first thing we want to do is make all these excuses, blah, blah, blah. You know what he was saying? He was trying to apologize to his dad. Dad, I sinned between before you in heaven. Just make me a higher servant. And while he's speaking those words, he's snapping his finger. Go get me the cat and cat. Somebody go get me a rope. I need some shoes to put on his head. I got a ring right here. We're going to put it back on his head. I'm going to restore to you everything that you wasted. Because that's what a father does. I'll tell you something about fathers. It doesn't matter the condition of the child. There's a love there. Men are hard for a reason, okay? The world is hard. And so God put a, a stiffness in men. But we're just that way. You know, I get tender. I get emotional. But go over and flick my wife. You'll find the other side of me. Go smack one of my grandbabies. You'll see another side of Brother Monroe. But God put that in there. <laughs> And, and just because I, I get tough sometimes, and so, sometimes you have to draw the line. It's funny that, that the father told the son, you know, you better leave when you take all your stuff. If that's your decision, go ahead. I'll be here when you get back. You ain't doing that in my house. Right. 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 It may seem hard, but it was the father showing him love. If you feel like you got to go do it, go do it. I'll be here when you're done. That's how God is looking at us this morning, this afternoon. 
There is a love God has for you. There's a care God has for you. There's a there's a a genuine desire. Brother Pete, you can play anyway. Close with your playing for him. If there's a genuine desire to know who God is, you can. God's not unapproachable. God is waiting for you. God is caring about you. Let's stand. You know why we don't come to God? We feel guilty. Anybody ever taken something out of the store? Oh, I love you, Brother Chris. I did too. I did. I'm about six years old. I forgot I had to pay for stuff. I just grabbed it 20 and walked out. When I realized what I had done, what was the first thing I did? No, I did not go back in the store. I went and hit myself and ate my cookie. Does that look guilty? Absolutely. Was it wrong? Sure. You know where I was not going back to? The store I got the cookie from. Because the shame of stealing it kept me from seeing the people that were in the store. It's the same way with God. God gives us a blessing and we go out and do something stupid. And then we're embarrassed to come back into the house. We're ashamed to get back into his presence. We're worried about how what's God going to think. I've done messing up again. You know what God's thinking? Why don't you just come on in the house? Right. This ain't my first rodeo dealing with people. You know, sometimes we think we're the only ones that have ever gone through what we've gone through. God, God's got a list of people that went through things. And trust me. You're not number one on the list. You're not even number 21. You're not even 10,050. Matter of fact, you don't even make the top 20 million. Everybody has gone through something in their life. Some difficulty, some hardship, some, some brokenness. We have, I have been mad at my dad more times than I can. But the older I get, the more I realize I'd rather have him than be mad. So you know what? I just get over it. Now we're going to get mad at each other. It's no fun. Friend, there's something about God. He's constantly tugging at your heart. He's constantly telling you, I love you. When the sun comes up in the morning and you feel that gentle breeze blowing on your face and you can see that beautiful field of grass next to your house, or you hear a little bird chirping. Those are all signs that God has put out there to remind you of Him. When you look down at your precious little baby and they're just wiggling their fingers and toes and they're looking up at you thinking you're the, the greatest thing since sliced bread, that's God telling you, I love you. He has enough faith in you that you're going to do the right thing to come back to Him. He's the Father waiting at the edge of the property, just waiting for that child. And as soon as you make a move toward God, He's going to come running to you. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads and begin to pray. Jesus, God, we need you in this house today. God, I pray, open the doors of our heart. God, I pray, let us have that relationship with you. Not one of shame, not one of conviction, not one of desperation, oh God, but one of love and acceptance and mercy and grace. God, let us come before your throne and raise our hands and begin to speak to you talk to you and reveal all our problems to you, casting all your cares on, on you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's begin to fill this altar right now. I pray everyone come up to this altar and just take a few minutes and talk to God. Brother Howell, you begin to play something. Let's, let's just take a minute and talk to God. I know it's Father's Day. We're almost out of here. Let's just spend a few minutes talking to the Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy.